Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 8, Lesson 8, Finding Unknown Side Links. So first of all, we have four different equations here, and I want to know which one doesn't belong. And this activity is really leading us into what we're going to do today, which is kind of solving for some unknown um, lengths of, of triangles and seeing how you can work out the equations that go there. So when I take a look at the first one, one thing I notice here is that compared to the other ones, uh, the rest have the b squared as being equal to b squared, equal to b squared, or no b squared at all. This is the only that has kind of b squared in the middle of the whole equation, okay? Or we say it's not being isolated there. The difference between this one and the rest is this is the only one that seems to have a subtraction sign in it. There's no other subtractions there. Um, let's see. This one, we think about this. This is a number. Uh, it's going to add up to 5. Here you're taking 5. It's like moving that over there, 5 minus 3. This is totally different because this is 5 plus 3. You can see here 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4 maybe goes to 5. These are all the same. This one's a little different because it's using 3 plus 5. So that B value is going to be different than all the rest of them. And this one uses a common triangle side length, which is a 3, 4, 5 triangle right there. But anyways, it's more about what do you notice, what do you wonder, than what else, <laughs> than anything perfect or accurate here. Okay, so for the first activity, we just want to take a look at these various triangles, and we want to label all the hypotenuses with the letter C. Okay, so what I always do when I'm working with kind of even my high school kids that do some math too, is you just take a look at your right angle, and we just draw an arrow across and say, that's my hypotenuse. The one across the right angle is C. When I look at B, I might be tempted to do it here, but what do I notice? Is this a right angle? That is not a right angle, which means there's no hypotenuse for this one at all. A hypotenuse only works if there is a 90 degree angle. So for C, we can see it's going to go straight across there. For D, we're going to go straight across to here. E, straight across to there. And F, straight across to there. So now we've labeled all of the hypotenuses with the letter C, and that's all there really is for the activity, for which one is actually hypotenuse. So just be careful about that. That's important because when you start solving problems, you're going to have a lot of numbers, and you don't want to get it mixed up. Remember that our sides, our A and our B, our A squared plus our B squared, are going to be equaling this, the, uh, the square of the longer side. So the whole key is just make sure, do you know which one's the longer side? Because when you start playing your numbers, if you get them out of order, that equation is not going to help you out too much. You'll get some crazy answers. All right. So let's use that to then find the missing side lengths here. Okay, again, we can see that our hypotenuse is across. So that means that this value squared plus this value squared is going to equal that value squared right there. Okay, sorry, a little bit crooked there. So let's do this here. So we're going to do a squared, which is the square root of 10 quantity squared plus b squared, which happens to be square root of 40 squared, is going to be equal to c squared. So the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is simply 10. The square root of 40 times the square root of 40 is simply 40. That equals c squared. 10 plus 40 is 50. That equals c squared. And then now to get the c by itself, we'll take the square root of both sides. So that the square root of 50 actually equals C. And that becomes our solution for what goes right there. Okay? So remember, sometimes you're going to have a square root as a, as a solution, and that is just fine. Now when you look at this one, our hypotenuse is right there, which means that this value, the square root of 8 squared plus B squared, is going to be equal to our hypotenuse squared, square root of 26 squared. All right, so just make sure you get the labels the right way. Right here, they're using A, Bs, and Cs. As you move along, they won't always use A, B, and C, will they? So the square root and the square cancel each other out. So I'm left with 8 plus B squared equals those two cancel each other out. So I'm left with 26. We'll subtract 8 from both sides, so that becomes nothing. So B squared is equal to, in this case here, 18. 26 minus 8 is 18. So we'll take the square root of both sides, so that b is equal to the square root of 18. All right, so there's that one there. Number three, now there's no triangle. Oh no, what do you do? Well, we have side lengths of 2.4 and 6.5. What is the length of the hypotenuse? Perfect, so we know we have 2.4 squared 
that's our a squared, plus 6.5 squared is equal to our hypotenuse, and we can just call it c squared. So 2.4 squared is actually 5.76. 6.5 squared is 42.25. That all equals c squared. We're going to add those up. So what's the sum of that there? It's 48.01. It's a very handy number to have, right? <laughs> Not really. Equals c squared. So now we're going to take the square root of both sides. And I don't know what the square root of 48.1 is. Well, 1, so I'm going to leave it at 48.01 equals C. Is it okay to have that crazy answer? Sure it is. Not a problem at all. Sometimes that square root can become a, some, a number that you know. That is not one of the numbers that we know. Okay? Number 4. It says a right triangle has a side length of 1 fourth. So the side length of 1 fourth. And a hypotenuse length of 1 third. What is the length of the other side? So we have an a squared plus a b squared equals a c squared, and we're given an a and we're given a c. So let's do one fourth squared plus b squared equals one third squared. Now one fourth times one fourth is one sixteenth plus b squared equals one third times one third is one ninth. So now we have some fraction math here. We're going to subtract one sixteenth to find out what b squared is equal to. Well. I can't do 1 9th minus 1 16th without a common denominator. The only common denominator I can think of would be to multiply them together to have a common denominator of 144. So 9 times what gets you 144? 9 times 16, so multiply the top by 16. And 16 times 9 gets 144, so 1 times 9 is 16. So then we'll do 16 minus 9 equals 7 over the same denominator, 144. Square root of both sides, so that b equals the square root of 7 over 144. Now you might be tempted to take the square root of 144 and make it 12 and do uh, square root of 7 over 12. Um, we're going to leave it just like this for now. Okay, just leave it as that crazy fraction. That's okay for now. now let's look at one more of these. This is a great one because it's, it's like a composite figure. We want to find x, but in order to find x, I have to then, first of all, work with uh, finding this value here. Okay, so let's work on this triangle right here. First of all, we see we have a hypotenuse, so I know I'm missing a value there. We'll call that a. So I know that 5 squared on this side plus a squared is equal to the square root of 34 quantity squared there. Okay, so 5 squared is 25 plus a squared equals, square root of 34 squared is 34. So now we'll subtract 25 from both sides, so that a squared equals 9. I'll take the square root of both sides now, and a is equal to square root of 9, which is 3. So right here, this value is 3. Now knowing this is also a right angle, I know that's my c. So when I come to this side, I have 3 squared, that one there, plus x squared equals the square root of 18 squared. All right, so 3 squared is 9, plus x squared equals the square root of 18 squared. Just we eliminate both of those things, and we're left with just 18. We subtract 9, so that x squared equals 18 minus 9 is 9. Take the square root of both sides, and x, oops, sorry, <laughs> equals square root of 9 again is 3. So x equals 3. We had to do an extra step to get there, but it worked out just fine. Okay? So that's the gist of really today's lesson. Let's take a look at your summary. It says there are many examples where the lengths of two legs of a right triangle are known and can be used to find the length of the hypotenuse eh, with the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem can also be used if the length of the, of the hypotenuse and one leg is known and you want to find the length of the other leg. Right? So sometimes we know... Uh, both legs, we want to find the hypotenuse, sometimes we want to find just the missing leg, and that is what we can do there. So we can use the theorem to figure out what's missing there, and we can work it out. So in this case here, we could say an a squared and a b squared, which is g in this case, equals that. To solve it down and get an answer like g equals a square root of 75. Now just recall that we can also take that value and use an estimation strategy to figure out what that's going to be. I know, for example, the square root of 64 is 8 and the square root of 81 is 9. So 
So 75 is between those, so I know my answer is going to be between 8 and 9. So this value here would be somewhere between 8 and 9, which makes sense. It can't be bigger than 10 or it wouldn't work out. Okay, we're going to pause there, give you a chance to work on your homework, and then we'll come back and check it together in just a few minutes. All right, homework time for Math 8, Unit 8, Lesson 8. This first one, we have actually five problems to solve. Um, so here we go, let's do it one at a time. Um, it's helpful, again, know where your hypotenuse is going to be. So in this case, we're going to do h squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So I'll write that over here, h squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So the 8 squared is going to equal, uh, so eight, h squared plus 64 equals 100. We'll subtract 64 from both sides to let us know that h squared equals 36. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. h is going to be equal to 6. So the value here is 6. Now let's do another one. Here we have a k and a 6 are going to multiply together and add up to be equal to, there's my hypotenuse over there. So we can say that k squared plus 6 squared equals 6.5 squared. In this case, k squared plus 36 is equal to 6.5. I use my calculator for that. I don't know what that is normally. 42.25. I subtracted 36 from both sides to find that k squared is equal to 6.25. Now I took the square root of both of those and I really wasn't sure what to do. I figured well k is equal to that. But I was just curious, when I put it on my calculator, this actually has a normal number, which is actually 2.5. So k is actually equal to 2.5. So that's one I didn't know. I just used my calculator and I found out that the square root of 6.25 is actually 2.5. So whether, if you got that far, awesome, you left it like this, just know that sometimes you might want to stick in a calculator and see, okay? Let's take a look at this one. Here, our hypotenuse is the five. So we have m squared, plus 2 squared equals 5 squared. So m squared plus 4 equals 25. We subtract 4 from both sides, so m squared equals 21. Take the square root, and m equals the square root of 21. I have to leave it just like that. This next one, there's my hypotenuse right there. So it is the square root of 10 squared plus n squared equals 10 squared. So this is going to cancel out, leaving us with 10 plus n squared equals 100. We subtract 10, and n squared equals 90. Square root of both sides tells me that n equals the square root of 90. And our last one, here's our hypotenuse at the square root of 85. So the square root of 68 squared plus p squared equals the square root of 85 squared. So we have 68 plus p squared equals 85. We subtract 68. And p squared equals 17. Square root of both sides leaves me with p equals the square root of 17. Not a lot of space for those last ones there. I'm not sure why we got them all squeezed on there, but there you go. Five problems. That's the basics of the lessons today. All right, a right triangle has these side lengths. The longest is C. Let's rewrite them. So the idea is here, you know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So can you rearrange the order to make this work here, right? So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. A squared would be moving the B squared over there. So you'd have C squared minus B squared. And if you want the B squared by itself, then you move the A squared over there. So C squared minus A squared. Number three. What's the exact length of the line segment? Well, the first one is one, two, three, four. That's pretty easy there. So L equals four. Not too bad. Let's see what happens on the page. Oh no, it's harder. Not really, we're gonna be okay there. So the next one here, we have M. Let's make a right triangle. Oops, make sure in the frame here, sorry. So we're gonna come out here and here. Oops, here and here. And we have two on this side and one, two, three, four on this side. So we know that 2 squared plus 4 squared equals m squared. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16 equals m squared. 
20 equals m squared. Take the square root of both sides, the square root of 20 equals m. And for q, we're going to come down and draw a line right through there. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is a length here. And we'll draw a line there for another leg. 1, 2, 3, 4, right triangle. So 4 squared plus 5 squared equals q squared. This becomes 16 plus 25 equals q squared. This becomes 41 equals q squared. Square root of both sides tells me the square root of 41 equals q. And we'll leave it just like that. Okay, number four. Okay. We have there are roughly one times 10 to the six high school football players. Okay, high school players. And two times 10 to the third professional football players in the United States. How many times more high school football players are there? And explain how you know. A couple ways of thinking about this. If you wanted to, you could put them all with the same, um, you know, base 10 there. So this means if I'm going to make this equal to, uh, let's go down to the 3, okay? So if I want to move this down, I'll move the decimal to the right. So I want to move this down to the third power, which means I'll move the decimal to the right. If I'm starting here, I'll go 1, 2, 3. So put the space holders there. So 1,000 times 10 to the third compared to 2 times 10 to the third. So how much times larger is a thousand compared to two? Or another way of thinking about it, two times what number can get you to a thousand, <laughs> right? When you divide by two, you find out that that number there is going to be equal to 500. So it's going to be 500 times larger is how much larger, how many more times there are high school football players compared to professional football players. So if you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to make the pros and become a professional NFL player. Well, there's 500 times more high school kids playing than there are professional. So this is a really small number that make it there. So just keep that in mind and maybe keep doing math. You might need to have that more than a football career. All right, the next one, we have a half to the third power. This is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which equals 1 eighth. When you half to the negative third power, that's like writing it like 1 over 1 to the eighth right it's the same thing but now we're moving this all downstairs so to speak now how do you write one divided by one of eight think of it like this this is like one divided by one eighth which is the same as one times the reciprocal right flip the second multiply which means it's equal to simply eight so a is one eighth and b is eight and finally number six we have a scatter plot for the weight and age the weight versus age of different dobermans dogs the model is y equals 2.45x plus 1.22. So this is our slope, and this is our y-intercept value there and there. So here's our equation, and here's what it looks like here. So what does a slope mean? Well, our slope in this case was that it's 2.45 was our slope. That was our slope. So what that means is that we expect dogs to gain 2.45 pounds each week, right? So they're going to go up 2.45 pounds for every week. That's what we expect to have in the slope. How heavy would a newborn Doberman be? Well, a newborn's not going to be zero pounds, has to weigh something, and that's what we find at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is like the weight that every dog is going to be approximately when it's born, and our y-intercept was 1.22. So we'd expect to be at 1.22 pounds is what we'd expect the, the beginning weight of a Doberman to be. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.